what's poppin t squad it's your girl keisha and i'm here with tonight's all tea all shade power season five episode four review so we start off tonight's episode with kane and the ghost meeting up with tommy to talk about getting rid of the human ass kane suggests to tommy that they talk to his dad since he out of jail but lo and behold ghost did not know this information tommy like nigga shut the fuck up i ain't told this motherfucker like you what the fuck ghost is pissed off Tommy tells him he talked to Proctor about it, so it's cool. Ghost like Proctor know too, and I don't know like how many motherfuckers you done told, but you ain't told me your homeboy, your best friend, like I'm your brother, but you done told Kanan and Proctor over me? Like that don't even make sense. Ghost asked Kanan to talk to Tommy alone. He act like he upset about it, but walk off with a grin on his face because he sees that the contention between them that he's been trying to build is finally paying off. Tommy swears to Ghost that he ain't told his daddy none of their business. Ghost tells him to keep it that way. Tommy says, you know what? He family, he wouldn't say nothing no way. Ghost tell him that He's been your family for five minutes. I've been your family your whole life. In the midst of that conversation, Tate calls. He answers the phone. And Ghost tells him that he'll be there that night for the fundraiser. Tommy like, you know what? It's cool. I'll find you men is by my goddamn self. And then he get in his car. He start off and he leave. Donovan gives Angela all of the files on Ray Ray. He tells her that Rodriguez thinks that she's hiding something. Angela says, I am a federal investigation. <laughs> I'll never have to see her or deal with her again. And Donovan leaves. And we see her put all the files into her cabinet and she locks it up. So she thinking that the, everything is cut clean. Nothing else will be brought in this whole Ray Ray situation. She got all the files. Everything is done. Then we see her text Tasha and tell her that the case is closed. Tasha say, girl, thank you. Angela then gets a text from Steve saying that he cannot stop thinking about her. Angela heads into the briefing and the team asks how will they find out if the, the Jimenez are still in the city. Angela says we can find out through the distro who we suspect is Arturo if we can't get to him we can take down the human ass. So Kane and Ghost are talking and Kane suggests they kill Tony. Ghost say we drop Teresi and Tommy find out nah that's way too risky. K say then what? What the hell we gonna do then sis? Ghost say Tommy won't turn his back on the Italian so we gotta make sure that they turn their backs on him. I got a plan. It'll make Tommy too dangerous for the mob and nobody can get hurt, especially not Tommy. So this makes me wonder, was the whole shootout at the end of this episode ghost plan, but then Kane used it for his own selfish needs to get to the connect way so he can be you know the dope boy in charge that's what i'm thinking now that i'm reading this out loud that ghost gave him the plan to do this fake shootout but he took it a step further so he can get closer to vincent duh that's what happened uh duh because he said nobody could get hurt especially tommy so now it all makes sense i just thought that as i was doing this review oh look at me so then we see Tommy at his grandparents' gravesite with Tony. They talk about how they're both going to be there for Connie no matter what. And this is basically a scene showing how Tommy is getting closer and closer to his father. Dre is handling business on the phone when Alicia walked the fuck up and scared the dog shit out of him. Like he looked like he wanted to piss himself. He was so goddamn shook. So he tells her that there is a setback with their in international business Alicia say you know I prefer when people come to me with solutions not setbacks he tells her that some of the bottle girls have quit because of Diego's aggressiveness and that Quinn one of Karen Massette's manager has also started to notice his behavior and that Diego has run up a $60,000 tab that no amount of creativeness with the books can balance Alicia you know what we're gonna have to find a solution to all this honey a <laughs> bunch of votes and now that I'm thinking about it again, as I'm doing this review, her solution was getting her brother not, as we saw later on this episode, but the plan did not work. So Tasha is in bed asleep during the middle of the day. Ghosts wake her up all rude and shit with an attitude, talking about her and Yaz got to get up and wash their ass so they can go to this damn fundraiser. He asked her, what are these pills? What is this shit? What is it? Tasha, what is this shit? 
<laughs> and she said, you know, Dr. Woven gave me this so I can be able to go to sleep at night. And she like, you know, I don't think I'm be able to go with you tonight. I can't be playing the perfect wife. I can't act like I'm all back to business like you. He said, you know, I ain't got time for this right now, Tasha. I was like, oh, Jesus, be a fist. I can't stand this nigga. They even got him talking to her like he I turned. He's like, come on, get up now. <laughs> I was like, who are you talking to, girlfriend? So go say, I don't got time for this right now. You and yes, you know what? Y'all stay here and I'll go raise the fun for our daughter's legacy. And she said, don't do me like that. Don't do that to me. Don't act like the reason I don't want to go is because I don't care. He said, no, it's because you're selfish. You know what? Sorry for disturbing you. Go ahead and go back to sleep, bitch. Go ahead and go back to sleep. I swear on my son. That scene made me want to say, fuck this show. Fuck these reviews. I am done. Like, tonight's episode pissed me off so bad. I was about to say, fuck this damn show. I don't give a fuck about these goddamn reviews. Because the way that they had that man talk to Tasha's character is just insane now. He's abusive. Like... It's just ridiculous now the way that they have him talking to her. It's just like, oh my God, I hate this nigga with every ounce of my being. Oh my God. Tony is back with his old crew. They at the bar. Vince is apologizing to him for not really being there for Connie. Tony said, you know, it's all right. He was like, no, it's not. And you can see that there's some tension between the two men because, you know, he didn't really hold his wife down while he was in jail. And, you know with men in the mob that's an offense like I got a problem with you but I'm gonna pretend like it's all good but I'm gonna get at you later about that shit so Tony makes a toast and he says that it means a lot that they were all there to take care of his family him and Connie as well as Tommy so then one of this and men asks him you know don't you think it's kind of odd that he had a life sentence and now he out and Vince will tell him, you know, show your respect, he an OG, but besides, anybody that he can rat out is dead. So we're at the fundraiser at Truth. Ghost is stressed the fuck out. I mean, he is acting like he is about to have a whole panic attack and about to shank somebody. Tay asks him, you know, where is Tasha? He said, you know, she couldn't make it. He says, you know what, well, damn, okay, so I'm going to give her speech then. Ghost like, no, nah, I'll do it. Tay tell him, you know, just stick to this whole club thing. Just sit back, sis. I got this. And Tay tells him, you know, if the night goes well, they'll be able to make up the money that they lost with the whole Linda, a.k.a. fancy situation. Then we see Tate go over to talk to this rich-ass white couple who say, we've heard rumors from some of the board members that St. Patrick is already causing problems and that a major investor is already pulled out. Tate assures them that it's all rumors and that he trusts James with his life. And as he's talking to this white couple, we see Ghost get his ass up on the goddamn stage. He going rogue again. And he starts to give this speech. And at first, he was starting off real good until he looked out in the audience. He saw this little girl that he thought was Raina. So he get to stuttering and shit. He can't remember his words. He's sweating. He then runs out into the audience. He turned a little girl around. And lo and behold, that ain't Raina. It's some other black ass little girl. So he damn near start crying. And then we see him at home drinking and thinking and shit. And he gets a phone call from one of the people at the Queen Sound Project letting him know they're short 40% of their goal of what they wanted to make at the fundraiser. Ghost says, you know, I got some private money coming in. I'll handle it. Let me call you back. So then we see him drinking and Tasha then walks into the room and she was like, you know, how did everything go? And he turns around all soap opera-ish and he tells her, I thought I saw her. I thought she was in the crowd. Like, I thought I saw Rain. And she was like, I see her every day. And I was like, well, Nick, you both need counsel. <laughs> Y'all are pretty ghost and shit. This ain't the sixth sense. Ghost say, you know, I couldn't even finish my speech. I had to leave. And Tasha say, it's just a speech. And she trying to connect to him. She's trying to, you know, have a moment where they can, you know, grieve together. And he click out on her ass again. He say, no. It was supposed to be your speech, not my speech. If you would have been there to give your speech, then it wouldn't have never happened. And then that nigga bumped her. Like she bumped him last week or the week after the episode before that. And then he walked out the fucking room. Nigga. I wanted to take this wig off and fight him for Tasha. Like I cannot stand this nigga. I was so happy that he got his just do this episode. Fuck ghost for life. I cannot wait till this nigga die. I cannot wait for the end of this series. When that nigga die or go to jail. I pray to God that Tyreek is the one that killed him. Or Tasha is the one that killed him. Because I can't stand that drunk bastard. Then we see Tate. In a meeting with none other than Andre, honey, Dre. 
and he tells him that he wants him to be the face of the Queenstown project I was like Come on, take and shake the motherfucking table, bitch. Dre said, you know, I got a business to run and I have a hard time believing James is just going to step aside and let me take over. We've had some recent disagreements. And Tay said, you know, he's just a little bit too unstable right about now. Dre then looks over to the side and he sees Tate's flyers for him running for governor. And he looking like, okay, so this nigga, he, he, he shysty. He one of the most shysty ass politicians. Okay. So he like, you know what? What's in it for me? And Tate say, don't you want friends in high places? And at the moment, Dre was like, nah, I'm good. And he walks out because it doesn't benefit him at this point to have Tate on his side. But later on, he realized that it does. So Tasha in the kitchen with her mama cleaning up and shit. And she say to her mama, all he cares about is his project. Things ain't been right since Angela. I stood by him when he went to jail. I stood by him when he got out. But now I think I need to stand by myself. Her mama say, death of a child affects everyone. James is not himself, Tasha. And Tasha say, this ain't the man I married. This ain't the man I met. I just wish I could start over. Her mother say, you can't never go back and start over. She say, well, I want to try, goddamn it. Shit, mama, be on my side for once, bitch. So her mama say, you sure it's not something else? Somebody else? Who is that man you were hugged up on at Raina's funeral? Tasha say, oh, girl, you ain't about to put this shit off on me. This ain't about me. This is about ghosts. No one else. Mama. Prop the baby mama decides to do a drive-by real quick. And walks into his house and tells them that she's 30 days clean. And that she wants to make amends for everything that she's done to him and their daughter. And she tells her daughter that she going to, you know, study for the bar exam again. And that she going to file for joint custody. And the daughter looking at her daddy like, if you don't get this cracked out bitch away from me, I'm not going no were with teen mom here girl if you don't get your dry face ass off somewhere and so Proctor tell the little girl to go on upstairs he tell his baby mama you will never get joint custody sis and she was like you damn near about to get your license take away and you always got somebody covering for you but one day bitch I'm coming for that ass and so he put out and then we see him text Jamie and say they need to talk cause they gotta meet up and talk about this Tony situation so Tommy calls Jason in front of Tony and says that he need a little bit more time, you know, to handle everything. And Jason, Jason hang up on him. Tony, Tommy like, damn, fuck. Fuck you, motherfucker. And Tony like, what's going on? Tommy tells him, you know, I got to throw another party, a.k.a. kill a motherfucker. And Tony said, you need me and the guys to help, you know, do it right this time. Tommy hesitant he thinking about should i tell him what's going on like mm. and he's like nah i'm good i got it he's like you sure he's like nah i got it pop and then he leave angela and that little mexican partner of hers interrogate arturo they tell him they gonna pin lorenzo's death on him and he says you know i ain't do it <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> oh boy then says so that means you've been lying and Angela say we don't care about Lorenzo but I'll do my best to keep your little secret and make sure that it doesn't spill out onto the streets and then the dude say you're the New York distro for the Jimenez Angela say tell us where we can find Diego and Alicia it's your only way out and on two will say I'm not the distro god damn it Alicia is leaving the city today and Angela say leaving how Proctor and Ghost then meet up on the pier. Proctor act like he just found out that Tony got out of jail. And Ghost looking like, nigga, you been new. Like, stop with your lies, bitch. Proctor tells him that Tony getting out of jail checked out, but there's new paperwork that popped up with a name on it that has him concerned. John Mock. He was involved in Tony's original case, so it could just be procedure. But until we know for sure, I think it's best you and Tommy don't tell Tony anything that may interest the feds Tony already knows too much we can't slip up with Tony or anyone you can't be in anything illegal especially with fucking Tommy my girl Tasha then went out and got her a new crib it looked like she's staying at a hotel but I don't give a fuck where she's staying as long as it ain't in that corrupt demon knives 
bad energy ass penthouse. So Sylvia is there and he tells her, you know, y'all could have came and stayed with me. She was like, you know what, that's an option, but I just didn't want to put myself in a position where you could put us out and change your motherfucking mind, especially when you find out who the fuck I really truly am. And so he tells her, you know, it's best any way that you move out because my is not going to stop until he gets something on Ghost or Proctor. And when that happens, her and the kids need to be far, far away. Dre and Cristobal meet with Diego and Alicia at the Clearport. Diego gives Dre a bag full of money to make up for the tab that he ran up at the club. Alicia then makes him apologize to Dre. And it was like pulling teeth. He did not want to apologize to Dre because he fucking hate Dre. And he low-key want to fuck Dre. So then Alicia tells Dre, I want the club in Paris locked down. And I want you to teach Cristobal the books so he can run things when we expand. Dre say, I don't think that's necessary. And Alicia say, it is. There's no point in having a lieutenant if you're not going to put him to work. Think, my nigga. Think. So then we see Tommy behind a fence watching their every move. So now he sees the humanities. He know they're in town. He trying to figure out a plan on how to get these niggas so he can kill them. So Jason won't then in turn kill him. Dre and Cristobal walk to the truck and he say, what the fuck was that about? You run the clubs now? Cristobal say, what was I supposed to do? Say no, I had no choice. So then they get in the truck to leave and as they're driving, the feds come in four deep to arrest Alicia and Diego. And I was like, why wouldn't the cars then turn around and chase after their ass? They just let motherfuckers go. That don't even make sense. But okay, for story purposes, all right. So then Angela and old boy get out the car and they tell Diego and Alicia that they under arrest. But before that, Diego took his gun out and placed it on one of his men so he wouldn't be caught with a burner on him. So... Angela arrests them, and then as Elise is walking by, she says in Spanish, I got you now, bitch. <laughs> and Elise looked at her like, bitch, I will slice your motherfucking throat. I got you, ho. I got you. Angela and the crew walk in. Everybody applauding. Woo! Get it, bitch. Get it. And Angela like, thank you. Thank you. Feliz Navidad. Chimichanga. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Yes. Tamika tells her, you did a great job. So you can have your first crack at interrogating Diego or Alicia. She, of course, chooses Alicia. So as she's going strutting off, Shantae, you staying. Steve fine ass step up off the motherfucking elevator and says, AUSA Valdez and she like Steve what are you doing here <laughs> I ain't returned your text from earlier oh my god I don't want my pussy good with it that's not good you want to take me to lunch go to Noble Steve say that he's the DEA and he can't allow her or anyone in that office to interview Alicia or Diego Jimenez he said I'm going to go speak to Alicia and Angela say I'm going with you he said no the fuck you ain't and I was like oh I think I just came with myself because he said that shit was some bass in his throat with some authority. And I was like, okay, nigga. Angela say, Medina, what the hell is this? <laughs> and they was like, I don't know, sis. So Steve goes in the room with Alicia. He unplugs the camera. He unplugs the microphone so they won't have any, you know, evidence of this conversation that he's having. And Steve say, I love nothing more than to take you and Diego down. But the orders from my superiors are to let you go. So obviously Elisa and her brother got, you know, connects with the DEA. They got some people in high places to make sure they ass don't go to jail. Alicia tells him that she planted evidence on purpose to get Diego locked up because he's a risk to them both and to keep Diego locked up. He say, I can't do that. If you want your brother arrest, you have to do that on your own because he's the face of the cartel. Sis, I'm not coming up there for you and y'all sibling robbery. This ain't young and restless. Alicia and Diego are then set free. Steve makes it clear to Angela that he did not use her and that he didn't fuck her just to get in on this Jimenez case. Angela goes through some paperwork and sees that Mock got a track on Tommy's car. And I was like, ooh, woo. Cristobal tells Dre that if Tommy or Ghost find out that the Jimenez got knocked, they gonna roll up on them at any minute. And Dre say, no, they won't. I need you to drop me off. Proctor at home with his daughter eating a kid cuisine and shit. When the feds roll in with a search warrant, they tell him that Homeland Security Bailey was last seen at his place of residence and that that's why they're there. Proctor want to know who sent Rodriguez talks to Darren. 
and we learned that he was suspended, but he swears that he didn't do anything wrong. Rodriguez said, is it because a misuse of your login? Did you think about that? I have a theory. Who else knows your password? And Darren was like, oh, bitch. Ghost walk off the elevator into his apartment and see all the Yaz little bags and shit packed. So he asked mama, what's going on? What's this? And the mama said, you know, don't make this any harder, James. And have you been drinking? So he was like, fuck this. He go in the closet to find Tasha. And he say, where do you think you going? And she say, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep trying to face what happened to our baby girl by myself. And he say, don't give me that shit. Like, I ain't got time for this shit today, Kasha. She tells him that he needs to deal with Raina's death. And then he shut out everyone. She wants out of that penthouse and out of this fucked up ass marriage. Go say, so you just gonna run out on me? Like, he the motherfucking victim. Like, you ain't made her life a living hell every day in that damn house together. She like, so she packed and she's like, I told Tariq everything. He knows everything, Ghost. So, she packed her shit. She walk out the room. He say, you don't mean what you saying right now. Shit, if we don't, nigga, we the fuck about her. Bye, bitch. So we packing. We getting our tampons, our toiletries, our color pop cosmetics, our Balenciagas and shit. Shit, we even took the TV remote. And go say, fine, leave. You can't help me. You can't help the QTP. You can't even help our own damn kids. Like, he is just an asshole to her. I hate the way that they write him. So Tasha said, oh, I got our kids and I got myself. All you got is what you always had. You. And she sashayed the fuck away and I was like, yes! Bitch! About time. But it still wasn't good enough. Because she should have walked out that room and said, bitch. <laughs> Kanan texts Tommy that they need to make a plan to get rid of the Jimenez. Tommy tells him to meet him at 1130 that night. Kanan tells them two little niggas that he got working for him that they're going to go ahead with their plan that night and he want them to pull up and do a drive by with some blanks in the gun so they can get closer to the connect which is Vincent. Proctor confronts Mock on searching his crib. Ghost goes to talk to the board and as he's walking in the room we see none other than Dre honey in a badass maroon suit and I was like yes somebody else that fucked over Ghost yes 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 I was actually cheering for Dre in this scene because I love the expression on Ghost's face that his ass did been duped to play it again honey yes so Dre thanks Ghost for everything he's done for him and their joint public endeavor Go say, you know what, thank you, Councilman Tate, for bringing us together. Trust me, I won't forget it. Meaning, whole bitch, both you niggas gonna die. Both of you. Two to the dome. Tommy and Vincent come out the bar. Kanan in the car watching and text the dude and tell him it's time. One of the dudes then decides at the last minute to replace the blanks with real bullets because he want to be a G. They then drive down the street, get the busting on Tommy Vincent and the rest of them niggas. One of the Italians gets shot in the leg. Kanan then drives up and acts like he's the hero and shoots the two dudes. Pow, 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 pow. Because it was, it was, this was his plan the whole time to make himself look like the hero so he can get in good with Vincent. Vincent was about to shoot Kanan, but K Tommy tell him, no, that's my homeboy K. He was meeting up with me. So... Tommy like, damn, let me go check on my pop because they could somebody could have rolled up on him too, so he break out. So back in the bar, we see Vincent and Kanan sitting down having drinks with each other. And Vincent asks him, do he recognize the shooter? Kanan say, you know, I ain't no snitch. Vincent say, if it's about Tommy, old drug beef, I can make sure the right people are paid. Kanan say, that was for Tommy, yo. Vincent say, so that's not through? Sammy swore to me that that shit was over. That's a shame. So now, Sammy ass about to come up missing, god damn it. Sammy ass about to, I'm like, damn, Sammy, I fuck with Sammy the long way, cuz. My calls Tony to see if he got any tea, but he ain't got none. Connie come out the room and was like, look, nigga, you gotta tell me the truth. How, why, how was you let out of jail? You been in that motherfucker for like 95 years, then all of a sudden they decide to let your ass go. You need to give me the tea and give me the tea now. Tony, cell phone ring, and she like, don't you answer it? He's like, all right. So he put his phone on silent. They sit down and he say, look, they let me out to get info on Tommy. Connie say, oh, Tony. So you a rat now? And we find out that this bitch know all about Tommy. 
So this whole time when he been telling Tommy not to let Connie know that he's his son, Connie already knew. So I'm like, why or is he what is that about? I haven't figured that part out. Like why he been lying to Tommy and making Tommy feel like Connie don't know that that's his son, but Connie actually does know that that's his son. I, my brain don't even want to function enough to even think about how that whole thing ties in together. If anybody's figured it out, let me know down below in the comment section. Tony say this is about Ghost and Tommy, not the family. We now it's confirmed that he don't give a fuck about Tommy and that he's using Tommy. Tommy didn't knock on the door. He bang, 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 bang. Tony go answer it. And he like, why you ain't been answering your phone? You know, we just got shot at. Tony begged him like, what's going on? Talk to me. We see Tommy's cell phone ring. He ignored the call. He like, son, tell me what's going on. And then they cut to Rodriguez in her office. And we see that she actually still does have documents on Ray Ray's case. Because that bitch was smart enough to make motherfucking copies, my nigga. She goes, she opened up the board and shit. She got photos of Angela, Tasha, Ghost, Ray Ray. She building a whole case on these niggas. She is coming for you. Ghost then leaves Tommy a message about Dre as he walks into his empty ass apartment all by his lonesome. That's what you get dickhead so then he gets a call he's like where you want me to meet and i knew of, of who he was gonna go meet it was obvious at this point so then he's sitting at this little rinky dink ass diner and then in walk angela ass and he was like you know what took you so long to call me back because he just knew she was on call <laughs> uh, he's like you know you okay and she's like and she's like you okay and he's like and then the waitress says do you either one of you know what you want and then it goes off I told y'all episodes 4, 5, and 9 are always the latest episodes. Tonight was episode was pretty good. It was a lot of little tie-ins. I give tonight's episode a B plus. And let me know what y'all think about tonight's episode down below in the comment section. Let's talk. If you guys have any questions on love, relationships, friendships, um, your job, your family, whatever, email me and Monique at sensueax1 at gmail.com. Love you guys so much. Thank you all for watching this review. Love you guys so much. Have a safe and blessed week. Bye.